All right, everybody, welcome back to Come On, Get Happy Hour, special Hot Rod Holiday Edition. It's the first time uh, I've had both of these guys on the same episode. They're both good buddies of mine, Hot Rod Legends. I'm calling this episode Best of Both Worlds. Uh, so we're going to get to that, but we've been kicking it off with this top 10 list. And, um, and we got a fun one tonight since it's Krummel's time. We're going to do top 10 coolest Christmas gifts you ever got. But first, I want to introduce my co-conspirator, my partner in crime, the brains behind the operation, Miss Judy Sketch Lewinson up in Canada. What's up, Sketch? Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? I'm good. What's going on? Well, getting ready for the holidays or in the midst of holidays, doing all the traditions and stuff, making that ginger beer, Jamaican ginger. style, the original recipe, <laughs> grandma's recipe. OG, <laughs> OJ, original yes. Jamaican. Yes, yes, yes. I like it. So uh, you're saying you do celebrate Christmas. We clarified that last week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we celebrate like, you everything. idiot. Christmas is it's called kind of a joke. Come on, man. <laughs> we have so many holidays in Canada. It's great. A lot really? of bank so, holidays. Holidays you get paid double time for. It's good. Nice. Life in Canada is good. Snowing up there. You got a white crumbles coming up. Is it still snowing? Um. On the mountains, yeah, people go. It was pretty. Your your stuff, home so. is beautiful. You should very posted relaxing. a picture. I'm like, dang, I need to come up there. Very relaxing. Very relaxing. Very pretty. So I'm drinking a little ginger beer in the spirit mm-hmm. of sketch in Canada yeah. and Jamaica tonight. Cheers, everybody. Enjoy, enjoy. We didn't even do a drinking word, but that's okay. We got drinks. It's all here. good. It's all good. So, um. Sketch, do you have a favorite Christmas gift that you need that you uh you remember? Uh from my childhood, probably um I got a cabbage patch kit. I don't know if you remember, it was like a craze. So to get I one, I do, because I, I put like, that on, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I my mom, I guess I don't know, she and her friends camped out somewhere, and so a bunch of us got cabbage patch kids. That was cool. And then as a wow. teenager, I um I got a PlayStation portable PlayStation, and that was that was dope because I love video games. That was the jam, yeah, yeah. My kids were asking for things from Santa, I'm like I don't know what a PS4 is or a <laughs> Twitch or a Switch or I don't know what the hell's going on. The only Switch is that Atari? Is like Atari? Tree. I don't. Yeah, I don't, you're gonna get a Switch. I don't want that. It's my mom used to say, "Go out and get a Switch." Mm-hmm. I mean, you pick a break a branch and go whoop your ass. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the Cabbage Patch. Uh, it was kind of reminds me of a. We just watched Jingle All the Jingle All the Way. Mm-hmm. Where, like the kids, the the parents camp out to get this present and everything. But yeah, yeah, I like getting puzzles every year. I puzzles, like yeah, puzzles. Did, yeah, yeah. Troy's going to talk about a special puzzle he he got. It's very sweet. Nice. Coming up there. Yeah. Cool. So <laughs> All right, top so ten. I got the top ten from Facebook. I love the drum the drum rolls you've been throwing in. So Thank cool. You. So number ten on the coolest toys uh of all time uh these are gifts that you remember and i and i wish there was like uh, a way i knew every year when i get all these gifts that there's only gonna be one they remember but so these are the top 10 gifts that these uh these people remember number 10 was skates so you got some skates man that okay was the yeah. Yeah. you know you probably got ice skates up there but down here we did you, the, you mean like roller skates i did the roll bounce yeah i never oh. owned skates I skated my ass off all the kid. I, could, I, I as a kid, I could get down, but I never had my own skates. I'd have to rent the funky foot fungus ones. But anyway, top ten. Number nine. This was a big one. I never had this one either. The big wheel. The big wheel is a jam. You could drift. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. That was like a big birthday ask. Yeah, that was a big one. The big wheel and the two plastic wheels. But mm-hmm. after like I lived a in month, the cul de sac, cul de sac as well. So the tricks were like crazy. Oh, yeah. They make them for grown-ups now. I need to get one of those. Oh, and uh, number eight, one of my favorite gifts of all time. I was, I'm was i going to talk about this with, with, with my Hot Rod guys. Um, Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels, the jam. Mm-hmm. To a boy, forever. And, Did you get uh, those tracks? I got the tracks. We got a garage full. And, and my wife, believe me, my wife Katie always wants to get rid of them. I'm like, you'd never throw out Hot Wheel tracks, man. You never, you can't oh. let those go. Because no, no. dad may get a whim to go out in the garage and, and do some zigzag, <laughs> you know, up from the bookshelf and the sweet jump. Boom. Yep. Don't get rid of the hallway tracks ever. You know Speaking you of can... tracks, number seven. I'm sorry. 
I was going to say what you could say is it's it's the science portion of the homeschooling. You're learning physics. Well, <laughs> Colin the actually tracks. did. I think in the fifth grade, two years ago, he did a, a science project and I did a video of, of like the, the centristic uh, forces. Have you mm -hmm. say it? It's a big word. Force, but it, yeah. like the, the gravity. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, the hot wheels and the loops. So, yeah, that we that came into play. Awesome. Uh, number seven, a friend of mine reminded me on Facebook was the AFX tracks. And those okay. were the electric tracks. Yep. Yeah. With the we got cars. them and I said, oh, yeah, and your cars would get jammed up and you get a racer from a pencil and have to clean the little things on the bottom mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. make the connection. Yep. <clears throat> and number six, um, I actually asked my son, what was it, one of his best Christmas gifts of all time? He said a dirt bike. But he's got an Eraser electric dirt bike. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to put that in the same category as a BMX. Okay. Because a BMX bike for Christmas, the jam forever. Pretty stellar, yeah. Forever. Yeah. Uh, number five, someone said uh, a turntable. They said a record player, but you and I were DJs right. back in the day, so we're going to call them turntables. Yeah. But also a Walkman. Remember the Walkman? Oh, yes. Yes. The Walkman and then eventually the Discman. Yeah. Discman, yeah. Those were yep. good gifts. The Walkman I had a Walkman with two little plugins for two headphones. Oh, wow. So nice. you and your, your homemate could be on a bike and listen to the same jam, you know? <laughs> Nice. Same ACDC uh, cassette, but they would they would make the batteries go down twice as fast, so the batteries would last like forty eight hours. <laughs> uh, but uh, a number four, someone said Stretch Armstrong. You know what that is? No. So it was a superhero, but you stretched him, so he had the oh, gel inside. Yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, it's kind of like a Gumby, but it was the hero. Yes, I've yeah. seen that. Yeah. And then I was watching Pawn Stars, and someone brought in like a head of one, and it mm -hmm. went for like six hundred dollars. And they're wow. saying a full body stretch arm strong goes for like 1800 now, 2000. Oh, wow. But what you could do with them, you put them in the freezer and freeze them, and mm -hmm. then they become a weapon. You like throw them <laughs> at people. <laughs> All right, stretch arms. Must have been so Number fun. Oh, yeah. Number three, I didn't know what this was. Someone put this on there, mm -hmm. and they said Sky Dancer. I'm like, I don't know what that is. And then of someone course. else put a sit and spin. I'm like, those both sound like adult toys. So I'm gonna put those in the same. I think, I think the sit and spin was like that. I never had one, but I I feel like it came out at the same time as that Una bouncer thing. I the thing you hold on to. And don't, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I think they sell both of those at the hustler store for grownups. I don't know, but anyway, <laughs> so I put those in the same. Number three. Mm -hmm. Number two was Barbie. Okay. Barbie, iconic. But we were like white trash. We never had like the name brand. We had like Bambi and Buford, like said Ken right. and Barbie. <laughs> They're like second cousins or something. Right. right. <laughs> they with the double wide instead of the dream house. Exactly. <laughs> you and a tub do, for the moonshine. Yeah, yeah. You it came with the steel and the cars that were broken down. You put in the yard of the double wide and oh, wow. I can go on and on. Mm -hmm. All right. Number one gift yes. uh, for me anyway. Ironically, two weeks ago, uh, people on social media know I love me some Evil Knievel and Elvis, and they know my yeah. brand. Yeah. So someone sent me my number one uh, Christmas toy of all time that was just reissued, Evil Knievel Stunt Cycle. Oh, wow. How cool is that? I haven't even opened it. I'm too scared to open it. Yeah. Like that. That's awesome. So you rev it up. Zoom, zoom, yeah. zoom, zoom. You make a ramp. He jumps and does flips. Oh, I had wow. concussions. I broke a tailbone. I did many injuries based on <laughs> evil can do. So that was my top 10. And then, of course, I had to do number one of the worst toy of all time. Okay. Do you have a worst toy of all time? Because um, I, have, I have one that sold millions and millions. I know I got a slinky and I didn't understand why. Slinky is a piece of shit. I hate slinkies. They work twice, chuk -a -chuk -a -chuk, and yep. then they get tangled in the commercial. Yeah. A slinky, a slinky, fun <laughs> and wonderful a wonderful toy. It's like a slinky, lies, a slinky, lies. fun for the girl and a boy. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It gets kinked no. up after two steps. Yes. Yeah, so no. But even worse than the slinky was the pet rock. Huh. Did you hear about that? Yeah, I remember hearing about those and just like, 
is that for people they just don't like? People are so dumb. They paid in the 70s, 395. The dude was rock. selling 100,000 of these per day. It's a rock. Oh, my goodness. So I want to do uh, a quarantine rock. It's a rock with the mask on it. So <laughs> you do this. Right. Thank you, America. I love it. I think we should do that. Check the patent on that. See if it's still. Uh, <laughs> Let me just run a real quick check. On still that. open real on that real quick. See if there's any competition in that market. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Edit that part out. Oh, gosh. So who's on the show tonight? I'm excited. All right. On the show tonight, like I said, we got two of the. Two of the bad mamma jammas in the hot rod world. Uh, both buddies of mine. Um, this dude's from Orange County. He was homies with people like uh, Eddie Van Halen. And um, mm. and his his uh, business partner is Michael Anthony of Van Halen. Uh, he does a podcast with Billy Gibbons, ZZ Top. Cool. And he's a, a legend of the BMX world as, as well. We're going to talk about that. Mr. Brad Fanshaw is on the show. Yay. There's half of his face right there, half of his it. face. And uh, the next guy has been a buddy of mine for at least 10 years. We've pitched a couple of shows. We got one in the works. I hope it pans out because he is a legend in the hot rod world. He created all these beautiful rides like that right there. And the coolest dude in the hot rod business, Mr. Troy Ladd yes. on the show. So let's get this party started. You ready, Sketch? Let's do it. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching once again. Come on, get happy hour. We're about to kick it right now. All right, everybody. Welcome back to Come On, Get Happy Hour. We had a little computer glitch, glitch because my co-producer is up in Canada and they get Wi-Fi, I think, like 12 months late up there. I don't know what's going on with the lag time, but we're back. And I appreciate my two guests, which are two hot rod legends. On the same show, I'm calling this episode Best of Both Worlds. You see what I did there? Best of, best of Both Worlds, because the first guest has a little Van Halen connection. See, boom, I'm witty sometimes. The vodka brings out my wittiness. But anyway, uh, let, let's kick it. Let's get right down to business in the double wide here. It's the holiday season. Dun, 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 and Hickory Dock. I don't know the words, but anyway, <laughs> we're going to kick it right off with my first guest, one of my buddies. And uh, both both guys and I, I wrote like, you know, because I want to give them props. They're my buddies, but I want to say these guys are award-winning uh, fabricators and designers. So I started writing a few credits. But when I did, I'm like, shit, this could take like nine pages. So I abbreviated. So if I left anything out, I'm sure they're going to remind me. So my first uh, guest is a buddy of mine. He's won awards from GM and Ford uh, for designing uh, he's won awards for fabricating. He's a BMX legend. He's got like 27 companies. He's a podcaster. He's hosted Car Wars on the Speed Network. Uh, he owns a company called uh, Bonneville Worldwide Inc. And he may talk about his uh, buddy and his old business partner, Boyd Coddington. I think there was the, they were the first um, hot rod guys to go public. I could be wrong, but he'll correct me. And I think he also coined the phrase rock and roll automotive lifestyle. Is that right? Because he's partners with a lot. He's got Mike Anthony's partners. He's in the rock star world. And he's my buddy, my man, Brad Fenshaw. Hey, man, how you doing? That was a hell of an introduction, wasn't it? That was. I was. Oh, but, but when you were saying that, uh, I was kind of making sure because you said he fabricates this and he fabricates that. It kind of sounded like. Like I make up a lot of stuff. I think you got it down there, man. You know? <laughs> well, them big words get me a little confused, but fabricator means like you, um, you, you take you, nothing you and make something. it into something. Yeah. Yeah. So you have an idea and then you sketch it out and then you make it happen. You make the magic come to life. Right. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, you know, it's, it's just a, uh, I, I look at it as, the 3D form of art, you know, because it's uh, you're, you're actually taking something, whether it be a flat piece of metal or um, something in a computer tube, and you're taking just what's up here and making it happen in reality. And yeah. 
I, I always said, you know, the one thing is like you mentioned my days with Boyd's and when Boyd Connington and I were partners. And the thing was, is that neither of us could draw stick people worth a damn. And uh, <laughs> so we always needed that guy around that we could, you know, stand over their shoulder, go, no, 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 move it this way, move it that way. <laughs> and, uh, and then we had our great team of guys that, uh, you know, um, made all the magic happen. I mean, I, I'm, I'm good, Stevie, and I appreciate the, the accolades, but it really takes a team of guys because there's guys that are better at metal fab. There's guys that are better at welding. There's the guy who lays down the paint. And, and damn it, there's the guy who has the patience to sand all that stuff to make it smooth. And when you're building a car, it takes all those guys because there's very, very few people that, and there are some, but that can do it from, you know, zero to 100 and do every little thing. And that's what's cool about it. Yeah. Um, my, my producing partner here is Sketch, and she knows – I'm like you, like I'll have an idea. I don't know how to put all the parts together, but I see a vision in my head and I'm like, but I need, and she, she says this all the time, teamwork to make the dream work. So it takes those go. parts of the team and everybody has their own skill set. We're like, I'm an idea guy like you. I'll, I'll think of a show or I think of a, I have a vision for something and I'll see how I want it to look, but I don't know how to create all of that. So it takes a solid team. And I know you've worked with some incredible people. Um, so there's a, there's a guy that used to work for you named Chip Foose, whatever, whatever happened to that guy. Yeah. I don't know what happened to him. He kind of rolled up and no, I no <laughs> Chip. Yeah. You know, Chip, uh, you know, it's an interesting story because Chip was ready to go to work for Ford and we always stay to draw door handles. Cause that's where a lot of guys start out at the big corporate places is doing one little thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we offered him a job at our place. He'd been doing freelance and it was probably the best thing ever happened to him. And, and then uh, Jesse James, when he came in, I always give him crap because Jesse had his hair pulled back in a ponytail halfway down his back and he didn't have one tattoo. And, and so, you know, um, but, but we knew that guy, you know, we were starting a motorcycle division and he knew everything about motorcycles that we didn't have a clue about. And it allowed us to take our ideas and build some, some uh, badass bikes back then, you know, and uh, that's what was great about it. And then even when you go back to my days in the action sports, Stevie, we had so many great, whether it was the professional skateboarders or the professional snowboarders or BMX riders or whatever, all the way through to our art department who created the fashion and our show, you know, our shoes and our clothing line and everything. We could have all the ideas in the, in the world, but it, it, yeah, you had to have that whole team of people. And that's what it takes. Just like here, you've got your producer, you've got you and all your funny ideas and, and then your contacts to bring your guests in, you know? Well, like you and, and Troy, my guest tonight are, are buddies of mine and I respect what you do. Troy's and it's a great part, guy, you know? You know, you know, and I, and I, you know, like I said, you're, you're in Orange County. He's in Burbank. I know you guys are also buddies. It's the first time I've had you on the show. I've had him on the show. I'm like, let's bring both of them on the show because you're all buddies of mine. And, and I, I love what you guys do. I've always loved cars ever since I was, you know, Hot Wheel fanatic as a kid and, uh, and BMX. And I know you're, you're, a, you're a stud in the BMX world. And, and that, that was my world. That was, that was my jam as a kid, you know, jumping trash cans in the middle of the street. So that you and I connected and, and, and became friends was just like awesome. And, and my, my son, even like I was going to show Troy tonight and I'll show you like the stuff that he loves. I'm like, that's my boy. <laughs> you know, this is, there you go. Girl. There you go. And, and he loves skateboards and BMX and he knew what vision streetwear was. And I'm like, that's my, that's my buddy, Brad, <laughs> you know, you, you know, what's so funny about that is, you know, you work in the entertainment world and I've, you know, done TV shows and stuff. And what's funny is I cannot believe how many times I've been in a pitch meeting or been on set or whatever. And somebody starts up a conversation and all of a sudden they find out my, you know, vision streetwear, or they yeah. find out that I was the vice president of ABA and a pro BMXer. And because so many people in entertainment, they skateboards and BMX. I mean, that was their world. And it's, and it's really cool because it gives you an instant, 
something to talk about and, and yeah. takes them back to something to give them big smiles. You guys were the real deal. You guys were in the magazines. I grew up in Kentucky and I remember I thought it was a cool deal for me to be sponsored and I was sponsored by a local record shop and my sisters worked at the record cool. store. So I remember a buddy of mine just posted today, like uh, the, the Christmas parades in my hometown was a, was a big deal and I was sponsored. So I had my Jersey on. So I, I was riding my bike and I was doing wheelies and, you know, turning the wheel as I'm doing, you know, cross ups, showing off a little bit. And like, you know, one handed wheelies and peace signs like my evil Knievel, you know, and my buddy next to me did a toe stopper. Like he stuck his foot in the forks, <laughs> but he was going too fast. <laughs> so he goes, he goes flying <laughs> over the head <animal. laughs> until this day on Facebook. I'm like, Hey bro, I wish we had cell phones back then because when you went flying and then he hit and rode and jumped up and everyone laughed and he took a bow, like, Hey, you're, you're welcome. Like he was a circus clown, like you meant, <laughs> Ta -da! like you meant to do that. <laughs> it's uh now it, it's, it's good times. You know, it was, it was a great way to, you know, grow up around all that stuff and be part of it. I was so fortunate to be part of so many iconic things that people grew up around and actually be part of it, you know, developing it and being around all the heroes of it and everything. That was cool. Well, the SoCal world. So my category tonight, I've been doing this top 10 thing was like coolest, coolest uh, Christmas presents. And was yours, I know you told me it was another one, but I, I got to think like a BMX must have been like the, the, the like you won the lottery. But you told me it was uh, okay. like a space helmet. Yeah, but I, you know what? If you say BMX, gave me a great remembrance right there. I lived in San Diego at the time. Okay. And BMX was like in its infancy. And I wanted a real BMX frame, a chrome molly mongoose yeah. so bad. Yeah, you had to have the chrome and, mongoose. Yeah. And I had I had bought a you know, a, a Schwinn frame and I'd sand it down and repainted it, put some red line forks on it, had motor oh, yeah. mag, Woo. but I didn't have the mongoose frame. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my parents weren't rich and, and, uh, and I, you know, I was taught uh, all I want for Christmas is a mongoose frame. All I want Please. for Christmas is a mongoose frame. Right. <laughs> told them starting in like August or, yeah. or uh, January. Put it on and, layaway. Yeah. You know, and my dad was, the biggest kidder. He was always pulling pranks, always kidding around. And um, I remember one year I went clear back, way back before BMX days, I wanted a sissy bar for my bike, you know, big, tall sissy bar. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get it. I was bummed. I was probably being a jerk, you know, and he goes, and he goes, you know what? You just need to help clean up, start getting all the wrapping paper cleaned up and stuff. And I'm cleaning it all up. And I'm like, you know, and, um, and he goes, and he goes, I think there's some under the couch too. And I reached under the couch. Ah, there's my sissy bar. Oh, well, so, cool. so fast forward to San Diego and uh, I, I can remember this like it was yesterday. I got some really great gifts and, uh, but I didn't get that mongoose frame. And I was sitting there probably pouting, you know, just, yeah. and, and he goes, Hey, Hey, come on. Um, my sister had got a cassette radio you know it was like a radio am fm with a cassette player in oh it. yeah you can record and he, goes, he throws me his car keys and he goes hey run out to my car and uh, get some batteries for your sister's radio and i was like send her out it's her gift and he goes brad come on it's christmas so i walk out there and i'm you know kicking the dirt and everything on the way out and uh i get out there and my dad had one of those big like 77 caprice classics and that nice. big old trunk, and I popped it open. What was sitting there in the trunk Ooh. of his car? And I was like, whoa! And uh, <laughs> awesome. I ran in, and I go, look at this, look at this! And he goes, oh, that's for your brother. <laughs> and, and, and I went, what? And he goes, I'm just kidding. So, yeah, no, but it was, it was so awesome, because it almost made it better than coming down, and what you expected was actually there. Yeah, you know? it made you, you it really it made you a present. It. it was totally like uh, the Christmas story with Ralphie and the BB gun. Like, oh, it's everything. Oh, wait, I see. I see one more thing over there. Exactly. And it's just it's just fun. Those are the best. Uh, I thought of you today. I saw this meme. And we'll fly it in in case you can't see it. It said kids today couldn't handle the pain of taking one of these bad boys to the shin. <laughs> oh, bear traps. Oh, yeah. look at that. 
Yeah, Woo! those rat trap. Uh, we used to we used to take files and sharpen oh. them up. So our so our uh, and my my shins do feel it today, man. They were uh, still today. I went from there to the KKT lightning pedals. Yep, were, and the you know. and the, the remember the Hutch bear traps, the round ones. Yep, yep. They were super expensive because they were titanium centers, and uh, and and those things were like they were like saws, like saw blades, man. If you slipped a pedal with those, come around and they they chunk it, and it just picks up speed and it spins back around and bam, right into the shin. Yep. <laughs> the only thing worse than that was. When you slipped a pedal and your knee went into the gooseneck. You oh, know, the gooseneck without a pad on it? Yeah. You had to have the yeah, gooseneck was, pad. But if you didn't have that, hard. I had two bikes. I had like a stunt bike I would do my tricks on. Then I had my pimp bike that I would like, you know, put the new sprocket on, my paper rods safe. But I had one one bike with mags. So I would jump on that bike because I, I didn't want to bend my alloy rims on the, my sweet bike, my light bike. But the mags, I could go all out. You can't break those bad boys, <laughs> no, those <are laughs> but I couldn't awesome. afford full pads. So I don't think I had a pad on the gooseneck. So sometimes you would come down and go forward and oh! <laughs> I No, that was the or worst. Or hit your family jewels on the gooseneck without a pad. Oh Woo! yeah. That, that, yeah. There was a lot of things. Okay. I got one for you. So <laughs> okay. my wife told me I was squinting. So is that better? Um, <laughs> um, said. The, uh, Charlotte said, I, yeah, she was like, open your eyes. She's over there going, and so I went like that. And she goes, no, not like that. Um, Hi, so anyways, Merry Christmas. The, um, she's waving. So anyways, there used to be behind our house like a, a cement culvert. Yep. And it was like a V. And, we, and it was on a hill in San Diego. And it was a huge hill. So we would like get our bikes. And after school, we'd ride down this thing and just zoom and you know, curve around. It was like this really cool thing. We did it all the time. One, one day me and my buddies were doing it and I was first and I'm coming down it. Well, what we didn't know was some dude had, uh, his fence had started to fall over and he had put wire, put Ooh. a stake in the ground and put a wire going at an angle to hold his fence up. And I'm coming along. Next thing, man, I woke up um, oh, wow. at the pizza joint down the street. Oh, no. <laughs> I, they told me I was coming along because we would fly down that thing and got clothesline right across the neck. Ooh, damn. They saw my bike go and me just go bam and my head hit the culvert. And oh. uh, I guess they got somebody and took me over. And I, I woke up with a wash rag on my, you know, I was like, why are we at the pizza joint? <laughs> Dragged like, you down to the pizza joint. The good old days. The you know, good old days, sued. man. <laughs> nobody got sued. Nobody even talked about it. It was just, hey, dude, you were doing it. You're the one riding down the culvert, you know. It was, yeah, it wasn't like, called Larry H. Parker. And whose fence was that? And that exactly, fence should not have yeah. been. But yeah. Oh, oh no. Now we're going to go after the wire company because they have deeper pockets than the fence person. So we're going to go after the company yeah. that made the wire. And, you know, and oh, the city owned that culvert. You know, that's how it would be now. But uh, <laughs> Hey, I just wanted you to know, exactly. Stevie. I got all dressed Hi, up for you tonight. Wore my my Thank finest you. ho ho ho, and uh, Thank you, buddy. I don't wear ties very often, but I just this all for you, my I man. Don't wear, well, that's a lie. I was gonna say I don't wear necklaces with lights very often, but that's a lie. You do all the time. Come on. <laughs> Come and, on. and I did make it's a, a Tuesday at my house. I made a winter all right, drink. So you, Joe. I want to hear all about that, but first of all, I want to hear about this. You've been driving my favorite car of the year and you picked up mad mike and you've been tell us about a little ride you had over the weekend and you did a little pick me red up corvette really so it. my friends at chevrolet were nice enough to call me and ask if uh if i'd be interested in driving the new 2020 corvette so, stingray convertible and uh, uh I, I, I had to think for about that long. And, uh, and I said, absolutely. And so on Friday afternoon, they delivered a, uh, a red 2020 fully loaded everything. And, um, you know, the new Corvette is incredible. It's got an articulating top. It's the first Corvette with the articulating top where you press one button and just like a Mercedes or any of those just tink, 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 and it's gone. Sections like that. And, um, wow. it has, it has, uh, you know, a sport mode, a track mode, and it has Z mode. And when you hit Z mode 
a red light comes up on the steering wheel. The digital dash swirls around and gives you a different display, shows you how many G-forces you're pulling, everything. And you also get an extra bit of horsepower. And the car squats down a little more, get a little more exhaust. And it's, it's incredible. So I couldn't let Mikey out. You know, Mikey in the 80s when Van Halen was like just going crazy. We're Mike's talking always about, who are we talking about? Michael Anthony, Mad Mike. Mad Mike. Van Halen. There right. we are with, uh, was that with Adam Carolla? That's Corolla. That's the ace man. Yep. We'll fly that yeah. in. I remember that. That was a long time ago. Um, and so Mike had a ZR1 Corvette that he bought new in the 80s, like 88. Okay. And so he's always had a love. He's had some vintage ones and like that. So I called him and I said, hey, Mike, uh, how would you like to drive this car that GM gave me for the weekend? And he goes, and he goes, are you kidding me? And I said, no, no, I'm not kidding. So Charlotte and I, uh, we, we tooled down there and I handed him over the key fob for the weekend. And it wasn't five minutes after I left the gate, my phone started blowing up and it was his daughter and son-in-law taking pictures with it. And, and uh, by the time I met up with him this morning, cause I let him have it through yesterday. And then I said, Hey, let's go take some photos. I'll come down pick up. But Jim was cool with that. Photos. They're like, they gave it to you, but then you panned it over to Mad Mike Anthony. Well, I told him that he was a Corvette enthusiast, and that and and they were like, "Well, cool, yeah, if you want, Good business. guy from Van Halen to drive the car, yeah, that's yeah. cool with us." But it was really fun because he um, he told me that um, by the time I uh, I was down there this morning, he was ready to probably order one, and in wow. fact. He had even configured one, and I took this picture of him with his little configurator. Wow! And he was he was like, I already got one picked out, man. I go, oh, you know, but uh, he loved the car, and uh, he's he's like, I'm ready to get into another Corvette. Yeah, it's it's just how can you do that? You can go on like Corvette.com or whatever. Or go to go to Chevrolet, you, like, you know, Chevrolet Corvette. Put your you car can, together. Yeah, it shows the color, of the interiors, the wheels. Like wow. he shows black wheels. You know, I mean just whatever you want and uh, you build that car and with what options you want and everything. It's really cool. And uh, so he was, he was excited. It was, it was a, uh, and, and I get to drive it till Friday. So um, that's always fun because uh, well, I'm available you know, until Friday. If you want to swing by the wide here and pick me up, man, if you were close <laughs> by, I would in a second. Oh, and, I love it, buddy. But you know, that's the, they're, they're uh, the built in is, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Yeah. And you know, what's amazing about it, Stevie, is that I drove that car around a little today and I was driving past a grade school because uh, I, I came up through Newport and all these kids were like, and they're pointing at it. Give me the thumbs up. Then I come down the street a little farther. There's a high school. And uh, th these guys were like, going, oh, look, a Corvette. And the one guy's like, you know, oh, you know all excited. <laughs> And then as I drove, people are giving me thumbs up. People are staring at it. And then as I pull into my neighborhood, I'm sitting at the stop sign. And this woman, probably about 70 years old, walking her dog, she stops right in front of the hood. And she goes, I mean, talk about a car that everything from so you can kids, get some action. That, yeah, they love it. <laughs> they love it. And, and it's I cannot believe for the sticker price on that car, how much car is there. It's it's incredible. Out the door, that that one's probably what sixty five. Sticker on that one was eighty four because it has every single option. Everything you can get. okay? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I took my kids to the Corvette Museum the last time we were back in Kentucky, and uh, but anyway, brother, I love you, man. Give me our give me our drink for the season. This is the last show of twenty twenty. We're gonna close it out. Super easy for a uh, you know a holiday night. It's coffee, and then I put in cinnamon cream liqueur. And then, of That's course, it? a little cinnamon, a little cinnamon. Uh, oh, it's, like, it's, it's like a, it's like a, um, you know, like a, uh, like a Bailey's or something, but it's cinnamon. Flavor. Okay. Very it's, nice. Uh, good. I was just telling, uh, Judy was asking me what I'm drinking. I'm like, I'm drinking vodka. And as I tell Brad Fanshawe, whatever else is in the fridge would happen to be ginger beer tonight. But oh, good. I can make At that. What, I, I can make what you made tonight even. Yeah, it, well, last time he had uh, vodka and you had to mix it with what? Pickle juice? Because that's uh, all what, you had? What, whatever's in the fridge, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, buddy. 
I love you, man. Hey, Come pick me up in that Corvette. On, Thank you. What's that? Happy, happy, happy holidays, brother. Hey, happy holidays to you. And uh, say hi to my buddy, Troy, okay? Will do, man. All right, man. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. See you, Brad. Okay, how's this? All right. I want to sound professional and everything for this next guy because he's a professional hot rod builder. Is that a basement to my voice when I go builder? All right. Anyway. Uh, yeah, that was Brad Fanshawe. This is the first time I was saying I've had two hot rod guys on that are well known. And I'm calling this episode the best of both worlds because it'd be even better if they like weren't friends, but I know they are friends. I even <laughs> should have pretended they, they weren't friends. Like that guy sucks. <laughs> But I know they are friends and, and uh, they're buddies of mine. And same with Brad, man. I wrote down credits. And then after like 27 credits with this guy, I'm like, whoo, I'm exhausted. I just, I just went back like four years, but he's been getting awards for so long. And if I leave any important ones, important ones out, please fill me in here. Uh, but he, uh, he's one of the only hot rod builders I know of that has a BA in business. So he could have yeah. been a businessman. But then he, he went, became a high rod man. I don't know how that works. I barely graduated from high school. So, and, and I'm still trying to tell jokes. So that explains a lot. Anyway, in 2017, he won the most coveted award. I think that's the SEMA award for a car called Mulholland Speedster. And I saw the beginning of this car. I saw a sketch on the wall. And then I'm like, damn, Troy, it's been two years. Where's that car? But I think it took like five years to build this amazing car. And it won everything. So it was worth it. Uh, 2010, uh, he won the Showstopper Award at SEMA for uh, the 32 Ford Ray Bestus, Ray Bestus Brakes. I think that truck went on tour. And 2012, LA Roadsters Builder of the Year. I know I'm leaving out like 52 credits, but he's a Yeah, he's I don't even know legend. where he got that list. That's, <laughs> that's he's a, a legend list. in the hot rod world. <laughs> there he is, the coolest man in the high ride business. My buddy, Mr. Troy Ladd. What's up, brother? All right. Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to mess up your intro. I didn't realize that was all formal intro and all. I'm sorry. I'm talking over you and stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dude, that's your intro. You're just messing yeah. up your own. You're stepping on your own credits. Yeah. No, the, um, the, the, that 2017, we did um, um, America's Most Beautiful Roadster and World's Most Beautiful Custom. And um, uh, gosh, there was a Legend Cup and there was a bunch of others. So yeah, there's that one car did... 20 some odd awards and over a year wow. and plus the other stuff. But anyway, but yeah, you got the gist of it. We build cool you, stuff. That That's wasn't all. even a car. We've talked about this before, but in case like two viewers didn't see the previous episode where uh, we were talking about, it was a concept, but it was based on what a 36 Packard. 30, yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. The, the grill is 36 Packard, but basically, you know, it's kind of like, um, like a like a, when you're building models as a kid, you, kind of what you do is like if you if you had the money and the and the resources to do it, if you just took all your ideas of what you thought cool cars were, and then mm. just combined them all together into a car that never existed, and then built it. Yeah, that, that's kind of like the the bottom line of of like of that car. Um, and you know that that was a lot of the vision of the owner because like that Art Deco that 30s era just elegant sexy design um mm -hmm. that was kind of what we were going for but but really that's how it kind of came together it's usually we just thought of stuff that we thought was cool for that era yeah. and drew it the and running boards and then you put back then did cars have the umbrellas and everything that's in the door i know they didn't have the beep 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 and the doors open and uh the, like umbrellas and door that was um uh um, rolls royce i think early rolls royce had that and those are just ideas that you can come up with Excellent. you know and then the, you know and then the hidden flask under the seat that was just because oh i didn't see that one we're because we <laughs> like liquor <laughs> that's, so, my, that's what my grandfather used to say four on the floor fifth under the seat <laughs> nice <laughs> so stuff like that again like it's it really is fun it's a it's a it's a fun business that we're in because we literally get to think like hey let's put a flask under the seat and we just do it stuff like <laughs> we that it. we there was there's supposed to be there were we're trying to figure out where to hide a revolver. And then we realized, well, maybe alcohol and firearm are <laughs> in an automobile. The three didn't seem like a, a, a good mix. Well, that so, goes under the dash. So, I mean, with the duct tape, I mean, so I've heard. Yeah, or, so I've heard. You know, we thought about like, or, or a little shotgun or something, but um, 
yeah, we, we, we ended up passing on, on the, uh, the weapon in the car. <laughs> part well, that's an amazing yeah, that, drill, buddy. You know, yeah, I was, I was of- there from beginning, middle and end, and we were shooting something once. And I think the owner was visiting. He's from uh, Seattle, I think, or yeah. something, right? Yeah. And he was down and we were shooting something. I wanted to interview him and you're like, no, he's, he doesn't want to be on camera. But then when the show, when the, when the car came out, the Mullen Speedster and started winning everything, he was, he was on camera, bro. He was, I would be too. Oh, yeah. I'd be like, that's my, oh, yeah. yeah. It, it was awesome. Like at the car show when we debuted it, he would like just stand like with it and like, you want to sit in it? You want to touch it? You want to yeah. hop in? Like, and he put kids in the car. Yeah. Um, he's really too. like, is it, he's really amazing like that. He's not all, Hey, stay away from my bajillion dollar car. It's like, you like cars? I like cars. Hop in. Like That's he's, what they're he's for, man. Yeah. Yeah. He's always, even the display that we had when we debuted it, we built a, an interactive display where you could walk up to the car and get right up in it. Not wow. like, not physically. We, we had a railing that would keep you away, but you could get this far from it. Wow, and that's cool. The, the owner, the owner's idea behind that was um, it shouldn't be something that pushes people away. Yeah. You know, it should be, we, it should be some cars and the hobby should, should attract people. It should encourage people to be a part of it, not push people away. So that was his, his, concept behind it so yeah we made a display that you would walk right up to the car which is which was pretty cool and that's just how his whole idea on cars is is it's always about trying to in- give to other people and bring people into our hobby not push people yeah, away like we're some kind of elitist you know yeah 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 i mean this is on a a, a millionth of lower scale but you know colin my son loves loves cars and and you know his his taste in cars is kind of like Troy Ladd's. Oh, nice! But, uh, he was searching for this one hot rod, this one Hot Wheel. For I forgot which one it was, but it was. They stopped making it like twenty five years ago. We were in Ventura at a vintage store, and he found it still in the box. And I'm like, Colin, what do you want to do with it? And he said, Daddy, should I open it? And I said, You said, What do you, What do you think? And I go, Well, buddy, I can just tell you from my experience. I don't have any memories of staring at a toy on a shelf, but I have a lot of experience, a lot of memories of playing with the toy. And so yeah. he's like, I'm going to open. So I did a video just to, just for collectors, just to kill Mike. And what are you going to do with it? He's like, I'm going to open it and play with it. <laughs> but is that the guy that uh, you built the Moholland Speedster for? Was he the same uh, guy that you went and visited? And then you, you, I think you sent me some pictures. So you did a video and he had a couple of your other cars oh, yeah he also had the yeah. schwinn collection he did the stingray bikes oh he's got a whole collection of stingray I bikes love that guy. he his dad had a bike shop when he was a kid and so he grew oh, up nice. in a bike shop and Perfect. so he he has a whole collection of, of vintage bicycles too because that's what he remembers that was like the first mechanical thing that really got him into mm-hmm. well you know things that are mechanical so um yeah, that was funny. I, when I posted that video, I, I, I kind of scanned to, for a few, through a few cars that he had in his yeah. collection, just passed by the bikes and a bunch of people, including yourselves, like, wait, wait, wait. What about What's up with the Stingrays, bro? Yeah. So <laughs> Back yeah, up to the um, Schwinns. And again, um, for the you know, um, bicycle fans out there, I don't know that much about them, but I can tell you that um, in that little, that quick little pass, there was all of the crate bikes. There was the orange crate, and then there was, I think, another maybe 10 different crate models or blue, black, white, but I know orange crate yeah. was one of the, so he has every one, which is pretty, which is pretty cool. But that was, um, yeah, I went up there not too long ago, just, uh, um, I guess last month or so. And, uh, the purpose of that trip was not to ogle the bikes, but, um, <laughs> but uh, he got one of the, um, well, he got the very first, um, four gt supercar in exposed carbon fiber it's called the liquid Oof, carbon i saw that that's incredible so it's the very first one um at that time you see it's been a month there might be more but at the time there was that was the only one in existence like he got the wow. very first all just clear coated they call it you know liquid carbon and um i went up there just to drive it so we he ford delivered you it drive it yeah yeah heck yeah Oh, yeah, like That's my son's also favorite car is the Ford GT, you know, um, but but yeah, you you did the scan and you, you were up there for that. And I'm like, well, we'll get back to the Ford. We'll get back to the GT. But the Schwinn's oh. I put on this week, I put on Facebook. What's your favorite, you know, Christmas gift ever? And a buddy of mine put the, Sch- the Schwinn 
Stingray right there with the banana seat. Yep, yep. The gear shift up here. But uh, yeah, I was with a car collector and I showed him that the carbon fiber 4GT. And we were talking about, did he have to um, like do the whole letter to Ford and why I should be an ambassador? Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah, dude. Um, he, he's, he's been mad at Ford for a while because um, when did they first come out with the, the 4 GTs? I guess 2017. Five? You mean the, the first the, one? Yeah, that's a different version. The, okay. The new, the new supercar version, I think it was 2017, maybe 16, somewhere okay. in there. It's only, it's only been for four or so years. Um, so I helped him do a video, like when they first came out and we wrote a letter and we did a video wow. and we did all of this stuff. And um, he's got a collection. He's got, he had two, at the time, two other four GTs, the, the, the 2005 versions, you know, that series. Yeah. And he's got this collection and he gives back. I mean, like in all of his cars, he sends his cars to high schools. He, he does um, charities all the time in, wow. his, in his collection. So, um, and he drives his cars and he shows his cars. So mm -hmm. what Ford wanted, they want somebody that's going to be a good ambassador of the brand and yeah. not just hide it away until they're allowed to sell. Cause you're not allowed to sell. If you buy one, you can't sell, you sign a contract. You can't sell it for uh, two years, I believe. Two years. Okay. Um, so they, they don't want someone to buy it, hide it away and then sell it for a profit. Um, yeah. because when you buy one of those, they're, they're literally double when you can sell them. So yeah. He thought, he, and he would be the perfect guy for that. And all his, he, he lives up with a bunch of other collectors and rich people. So some of his other friends got them and they kept passing him up. Each year, he kept sending these, these letters and explaining why he would be a good fit for that car. And he wasn't getting, and he was so he mad. Uh, yeah, and, and he, uh, he even said, oh, I'm gonna sell all my Fords, like <laughs> screw Ford. And he was just like so upset. And, and you then were a he Ford guy, so he came to you. Uh, hmm. I mean, Ford loves you. Yeah, but and but I don't know anybody in that side of things, like okay. like the pick that pick uh, for the um for that. So long story short, um, he finally over you know it's been four years. He finally got accepted, and he was excited. And then just at luckily, I mean, just neat, just out of coincidence, um, he was. Cause you get, they, they assign you a concierge. They send you this package of stuff where you pick the, the colors and things to design. It's a whole freaking process. Wow. I mean, on that level, you have your, like your own direct concierge just for the design of your particular car. So he was picking paints and he was sending me paints and we were trying to, I was helping him try to find the perfect paint. So it delayed the process of his car in that delay. They announced that they were going to, release this all liquid carbon fiber. So the whole cars, Ooh. they're carbon fiber, but they're painted. Yeah. So they announced that they were going to do this liquid carbon where they just expose, it's exposed with clear coated. And then you have some accent colors. So just okay. luckily he was waiting for his, when they announced that he talked to his concierge and said, Hey, I want one of those, send a letter. And um, he uh, just good timing. They said, okay, you're the first one. Oh, and he did end up sending um, another letter that went up to the executives that oh, wow. said, hey, this guy should have one. And then he asked for the, the liquid carbon version and they gave it to him. So anyway, it was really neat. It all worked out. So he was pretty excited to have the first one. And he's like such a good guy. He's like the, the best guy for that sort of thing. And because of um, COVID, he couldn't go and visit the factory because you, you're allowed to go visit the factory when they're building it. Um, so he couldn't do that. So he had the idea, which it was just to be nice. I mean, it was just because he's a good guy, but it's probably going to throw the value of that car through the roof because he had all the people in the factory autograph the car under the deck lid oh, that wow. worked on it at the factory because he didn't get to go to meet them. Yes. And so, so when he got it, we open up the hood and there's all the guys from the Ford factory that autographed it. And it said liquid carbon number one. Woo! And so... Yeah, he's, he's got the um, first one rolled off. Yeah. So does he drive it? Yeah. I mean, I know yeah. you went up there, but I drove but, it. So yeah, that was a funny. That was a funny story. I had to leave the next day, and so um, we had a bunch of people to meet because he had a little party, and then I met some. Um, I met some um, museum executives. They're talking about the future of automotive museums. So we did a bunch of stuff. While I was there, and then he's he's like a little kid. He's like, like we're talking to these people and doing lunch and stuff. He's like, hey we should just get out of here and go drive that car. I'm like, yeah, we should go get, <laughs> drive that car. Blow this popsicle stand. Yeah. So we ended up 
taking off and, and driving the car and I had to leave the next day. And again, brand new car. It had two miles on it on the yeah. odometer and we just drove it maybe 15 minutes and he pulls over. I said, what's wrong? He's like, you need to drive it. I'm like, dude, you've driven your new car <laughs> that you've waited for years for 15 minutes. He's like, yeah, yeah but you're going to leave tomorrow. I'm like, oh, man. And, and, and I told him, I said, I said, um, Hey, okay. Just so you know, this isn't one of those like polite situations where yeah. you're going to say, Hey, drive the car. And I'm going to politely say, no, thank you. Cause yeah, I want to drive yeah, the car. Bro. Yeah, if you, if you offer, I'm driving. He's gonna so, he's yeah. saying like he's thinking you you would say no, I couldn't possibly. <laughs> yeah, like, like, I'm like okay, flat over, Jack. <laughs> so so yeah, it was great. So yeah, I drove the car a bit, and then um, even later that night, driving home, we we went back to the garage and did some more stuff. And driving home, he's like, you should drive it all the way home because you got to leave in the morning, so you're not gonna get a check. Like okay, so it was cool. That thing That's is. Um, did you punch it? I did. It did. did you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of looked like we, we were out on, on the highway and um, or like, not really highway, but, you know, there was nobody around. And I kind of slowed way down and I kind of look over. It's like, can I? He's like, do it. So, <laughs> it's cool. So your head went back. Yeah, it was fun. But, you know, uh, cars like that really have a different feel. They're so uh, smart for lack of a better word, they kind of yeah. don't let you get into too much trouble unless you turn off all the safeties, you know, but. So it's got a lot of bells and whistles to go, Hey, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, it's just insane. Like you push a button and it drops down instantly. Like uh, I think it's four inches for track mode. And then the wing comes oh, up man. it's got just all this crazy um, like technology. It's, it's pretty fun. You know, have, I've have always you been driven a, the 2005 or the previous model when they First no, back. no, he has, he has one there too. And that was what we were originally going to do, but we ran out of time is I was going to take that car out and Compare. he was going to take the new one out and then we we're just going to like switch Play off on. and yeah, but we didn't have a chance, but. Wow. Does he also, like speaking of, speaking of things that didn't exist, I know um, we, I think we touched on it once before, but you did the black widow that was in Peterson's and that was actually a model of a car uh, or a truck. And someone came to you and said, this truck never existed. Can you make the real life version? Does he also own that? He does. Black, black, I thought yep. so. When you did the video, I'm like, I think that was a Black Widow over there. That was a Black Widow. Yeah. Um, he didn't. He didn't have us build that. Uh, we built it for another customer, and yeah. then he ended up buying that. Uh, he saw okay. it at auction, and he ended up buying it. And that's how I met him. Actually. Oh wow. Months. Okay. Yep. And again, yeah, that was that one summer. of those things where he's you know as a as a as a boy he he built that model and there's a lot of people that had built that model and he's like oh look at that i want to have that you know and so that's how that's how he ended up with that and that's how i met him and interestingly enough his collection if you go to his his like where his collection is and where his little garage is it really is if if it's almost like if you're a 13 year old boy and had the money to buy anything that you wanted um that's what his collection is like because he's got cars like that. He's got a DeLorean because of back to the future. Oh, you know, he's, he's got um, all kinds of um, movie memorabilia in, in his car garage. Like he has yeah. the actual whip from Indiana Jones. He has oh, the actual wow. flux capacitor from this guy needs movie. to be my new best friend. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> he has a space wall. Cause he likes space. So he has, well, he has real space and fake space. So he has got a lot of artifacts from like star Trek and star Wars on one wall, but then he's got, real space like space suits and things that yeah. actually went so it's just it's just fun he's just a re, it's a really fun collection that best way like to my describe perfect it. man cave if katie would allow me i would have you know one of the evil knievel's original motorcycles there I yeah have, of course the bandit from smoking the bandit you know uh, just just all the things that i grew up loving and i grew up loving hot wheels and hot rods and and uh so troy i asked uh on facebook this week the coolest Christmas gift you ever got. Do you remember? You grew up in Newport, right? Orange County? Orange County. Um, the coolest Christmas gift I ever got. There's a lot that we didn't get. That I know we wanted, but was there one that you're like, all right, that's that's my jam right there. I mean, the, instantly, I mean, it's it's kind of cliche, but it, it instantly a beach, I mean, bike. I mean, because a bike was such a, a for me, I mean, it's a we, gateway. We, that was the gateway drug to hot rods. Well, I mean, not only that, it was like freedom. I mean, that, yeah. that allowed. That's what I say know. to people. 
Like I grew up without a car, single mom, and my bike was my freedom. I was just telling yep. Katie this yesterday that you could jump on your bike and you're like, whoo. So th- I think that was a big deal. And I like I remember wanting a beach cruiser because we live by the beach and I wanted to, I wanted to put a surfboard on the back and, and ride to the beach. And back back then at like 12 and 13, you could go and ride your bike to the beach and go surfing by yourself. Uh-huh. But now it's probably too scary for yes. parents. <laughs> but then, you know. Um, so beach so, cruiser? Yeah, beach cruiser. Yeah, I yeah, always dreamed I, of a, the Schwinn. We never could afford a Schwinn. We had a Schwinn, one Schwinn bike shop. And I used to go in there and just stop by the Schwinn shop, you know, and just like looking around. <laughs> but I had a Huffy. I had like the cheap so, ass. <laughs> I mean, uh, f- funny story. So, yeah, because I, I grew up, um, you know, I grew up with single mom, no money, the same kind of yeah. thing. And here's a, a funny story that you're going to go, oh, because you were talking about those crate bikes, like the little Schwins. Yep. So yep. I remember before I got my beach cruiser later, because that was a big deal because it was new. I've never had a new bike at yeah. that point. But so um, when I was younger, my mom bought me a bike from the Goodwill. So there was a, a bike at Goodwill and I liked it because it had a gear shift on it All right. and um, banana seat gear shift, like sissy bars. I'm pretty sure yeah. I had like a, a, an orange crate um, and didn't Dude, know. You had an OG. You should be hanging that in your shop right now. I know. I didn't, I didn't even know that. And I remember when I look back um, at the time, again, it wasn't really cool. And I liked it because it had a gear shift. And I remember riding it to the store because I used to ride to the grocery store for my mom. And, and uh, some kids made fun of the gear shift and the banana seat. And then I was devastated. And then I, I didn't like it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Then it was on to BMX. Then you wanted a BMX. You yeah. Well, like, or Huntington Beach, like again, like BMX or beach or, cruiser. Or cruiser. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. had a beach cruiser. My beach cruiser was the, it was called Schwinn Heavy Duty. And it was a paper route bike. So I didn't know about a beach cruiser in Kentucky, but I knew I needed that big heavy duty bike to put on my 150 papers on the, on yeah. the front, you know, but then I had my BMX on the side, you know, a little pimp bike on the side. Nice. But anyway, I saw that um, you exchanged some gifts with uh, your, uh, your employees. <laughs> no, <You're> lucky. Uh, <laughs> I can't find that picture, but you got a sweet puzzle from one of your employees. It's on, uh, it's on my Instagram. I know I had oh, it. No. I, Oh, it's oh, not. Man. It was a. It was a story. I put it I as know. a story, so it, it deleted in um in twenty four hours. Um, yeah, I could, I could, I could send you those. Um, that that that. The, um, oh, you series. know what? Careful what you wish for here. Oh, so. you do have it. <laughs> that's right. I sent it directly to you. Well, I had the. Uh, yeah, that's my phone. So I had the iPad. I thought I had it on, but oh. you thought it was one thing. And then you yeah. started putting it together and it was <laughs> the iconic, so, uh, big burly guy that, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah. The, um, Kyle, one of the guys that works here gave me that. And again, the box shows a picture of Santa Claus. I know. It's so, so innocent and sweet. So actually I gave that to, uh, to Davida, my fiance, because she likes a uh, puzzle. Like, Oh, here's a puzzle. And here's so she's put- <laughs> yeah. Sweet innocent box of Santa. Yeah. Then- checking this list. And That's then what's bam. Happening. Yeah. Look at that package. Hey, I said you better put a <laughs> stocking over that package. <laughs> uh yeah, it's, that's pretty funny. Um, yeah, I think I think between you and me and my brother-in-law and a few of my friends, just about every version of that gentleman has um passed by our phones. <laughs> Birthday cakes and everything yeah. we can think of. We're like, wait, there's one more. Look in the clouds. What's that? <laughs> the <clouds. laughs> that's right. That, like, you know, that, you got sick friends when you're sending stuff like this back and forth. That's right. That, that was one of the things I did say. Like, if yeah, that, that's something you can tell, like, your, your people. If you know who that is, you have yeah. sick friends. Yeah. Pretty much. You found your tribe right there. Yeah. And if you don't know who that is, Google it. Yeah. Get but, your um, friends. Your friends aren't cool if you don't know who that is. That's right. That's, that's pretty funny. The, the interesting thing about, about that is... um. I did send you the actual story about that guy. He was actually a really, a really know, nice guy. Like, man. And he's no. So he's a good guy. He, and I'm like, don't kill the illusion, Troy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully his family's getting some kind of kickbacks from all this publicity. That guy's everywhere. Um, I hope so, brother. Cool. So uh, what all else right, do you want to talk about? Um, well, oh, I, think I think we're an hour late. I'm sorry about that because my producer's in Canada. And I'm not sure they even have Wi-Fi up there. So we, we were 
we were lagging there, but I appreciate you coming by my man. And, uh, you going anywhere for the holidays? You're making some moonshine. What's going on? I don't know. Have yet to figure that out. There was some discussion of maybe ditching out and heading to Maui or something. I don't know. Um, but traveling is kind of sketchy. So I'll see enough. You, we'll see. You drink that moonshine that kills everything, you know, the, that's true. <laughs> I true. I, I'm out of that. I think I need it. We need to mash in and, um, and get some more of that stuff distilled. We're a little, we're, we're running low. I need to come over and we'll have a moonshine party again. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. I approved. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I know. I was hey, even you're... cheating. I was even nursing it a little bit. I, you're like, is uh, that the same me... drink? Yeah. You're, um, yeah. Me and your wife um, called you out on that. I think she, she was drinking them great. Well, she mixed those. She did a fantastic job mixing that moonshine drink. So she's Irish, man. She can throw down. It's called Pochine in Ireland. So that's Irish yeah. moonshine. I know so. she outdrank you. That's for sure. Wait, am I ruining the CBD? <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, I don't know. We got to go to Woo. Cut the commercial. I'm going to edit that later. <laughs> that's right. I talk a big game. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, buddy. You know, I love you, my man. Uh, hey, yep. Davida, and happy holidays. And thanks for dropping by the double wide once again. Always a good time. And go on Troy's Instagram. Can they see those, uh, the 4GT, uh, carbon fiber we're talking about and all yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, that stuff's still on my um, on my, norm, my normal feed. So yeah, it's down there a little ways. But yeah, Hollywood Hot Rods Instagram. There's all kinds of cool stuff on there. Cars, the Mohon that we were talking about. I think Black Widow's probably on there if you scroll down for, far enough. So yeah, it's all there. All those, all those cars. It's so, so many. Uh, all right, buddy. Thanks for dropping by, my man. And Merry right. Christmas to you and Davida and everybody at the shop there. Yep. Cool. All right, buddy. See ya. See you soon. All right. Bye. Everybody, thank you for watching. Come on, get happy hour. Wishing you and yours a happy and healthy 2021. And uh, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Whatever you celebrate. I'm wishing you good vibes. And, uh, and, my, and my homie Sketch is going to take us out with some good vibes and some good music. You ready, Sketch? I'm ready. Happy holidays, everyone. Happy holidays. See you next year, y'all. You're in the mix with Jimmy